Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Skyfish and today I will be explaining the card game that is in my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy IX. Tetra Master is a collectible card game that you can play with a lot of different NPCs throughout the game. And there are four topics I will be covering in this video. First one is the arrows, second is the numbers and letters, the statistics, the third is combat, and the fourth is just some little gameplay tips. First, in order to even play a match, you have to have at least five cards. You can easily get five cards in the very beginning of the game, and then even if you don't, you can get them randomly after a battle, or just finding them strewn about the world. Right, let's take a look at the cards I have in this playthrough. I'll use one of my favorite cards as an example, the bomb. I don't know why, but I love them. I just like the look of it. <clears throat> on it, you can see three arrows. One on the top right, one on the right, and one on the bottom left. The numbers I'll explain in just a second. The arrows show in which directions a card can fight. The numbers and letter represent the stats of the card. The first number, this card's being a 1, determines the card's power. It's the number with which it starts a fight, after an algorithm. The letter determines the card's battle class. P stands for physical, M stands for magical, X is flexible, and A is assault. Oops. Physical battle class always does battle with the third stat, or the first stat after the letter, the physical defense. Magical Battle Class, or M, always does battle with the fourth stat, the second number after the letter, Magical Defense. X, for Flexible, always does battle with the defending card's weakest of the two defenses. Very useful. And Assault, A, means the strongest value on the entire card challenges the weakest value on the entire defending card. It's so strong. Alright, let's get into a match to show how combat works. First, you choose five cards. Margaret's actually kind of a, a tough opponent, so I'm going to pick some of my stronger cards. Actually, wait, let's go back on one. Pick that one. Now I want one with... There. I just realized I have no up arrows. There we go. I'll just pick a flan with all of them. <laughs> Alright, so the, when the game starts, a 4x4 grid is summoned. This is a rare example of when no, no spots are blocked off by stone. It doesn't really happen that often. But some, it can be anywhere from 0 to, I think, 5 or 6. Then a coin is flipped to see who goes first. Red for the opponent, which happened, or blue for you. And then the person who goes first places a card. Now you see how that card that the opponent placed, a Zagnol, has no arrow on its right side. Now if I take my Iron Knight and place it here where I have an arrow pointing to the left directly at that card, and that card has no arrow to defend, I will automatically capture it. And as you can see, she returned the favor by placing her Lizard with a top left corner, capturing my Iron Knight. Now I'll show you how you fight in this game. If you look at the lizard she placed, the card on the bottom right, it has an arrow on its left side. I'm going to take my bomb and place it here, so it will contest that lizard's arrow, this left arrow, with my bomb's right arrow. And. Uh, my bomb won. Now there's an algorithm to this. Now I'll explain that once I scroll to it. Okay. So, my one magical class zero, 00 is fighting a zero physical class zero, 00. The way it works is a bracket that's you don't see that determines a card's starting value for this equation that determines combat strength. First, your uh, 
you're assigned a value according to the bracket. For example, 0 is 0 to 15, 1 is 16 to 31, etc. I'll provide a link in the description to the exact bracket to show you. Um, so my bomb started with 16 to 31 for the first part of that equation. Then, a random number was chosen between that 16 and 31. F for example, let's just say 20. And then, a number was chosen from 0 to 20. Okay? Then you would subtract the second number chosen from the first number. So let's say the number chosen, from the second number chosen was a 5. So 20 minus 5 is 15. So for example, for sake of this example, excuse me, my bomb, my bomb started with 15. The same would happen with the lizard. The lizard's defense could be anywhere from 0 to 15. Let's say 14. And then, any number from 0 to 14, let's say 2, so it'd end up with 12. Right? So my 15 against it's 12. And the card with the higher difference between those two numbers is the winner of that combat. Sounds complicated, and not complicated at the same time. Okay? So now, I'm going to show you another interesting thing, if it works. So if I take my Iron Knight with a top left arrow, and place it against this lizard's bottom right arrow, and I win, you'll see something interesting. A combo. So, if you beat a card with a contesting arrow, it will capture all surrounding enemy cards that it is pointing to. But it'll only go once. It's not going to spread across the whole board. But, if you capture a card that has no contesting arrow, like I did with my first card against her first card, it won't combo. It has to be two contesting arrows. Also, this can be bad just as it can be good. Let's say you place... Let's say, for example, I place my zombie here, and the lizard and the, the lizard and the Zagnal both have contesting arrows. I would choose which one to fight first. And if I win, I capture it, combo, whatever. If I lose, I'd lose a card. But after I win, I would then fight the second card. And that second card, if it beats my card, then it combos. So you have to be very careful with where you're placing cards. But, I'm going to be placing my... Zombie here, to try and see if I can combo. To get both of them. See, I comboed, and got both of the lizard. Also, you see how she attacked, and lost? That means I captured the card. And, this is a good example of what happens when you win 10 out of 10 cards. You get a perfect, and you win all five of their cards. Now, even if you capture all five of their cards, but you only control four of your cards, that's not a perfect, and you only get to choose one of their card. Or if you have control of all five of your cards at the end of the game, and you only capture one of theirs, you only get to choose the one card that you captured. Alright? And that's all the basics of the Tetra Master. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something today. Now, uh, go kick old Margaret's ass for me.